Personal finance expert and MeVest founder Leslie Ann Scorgi joins us on Canada Now. And Leslie Ann, your latest article in The Star discusses keeping to your budget if you want to spoil your kids this spring. So they call this guilt buying. I don't like that terminology, but that's what it's bait. Like social scientists are calling it guilt buying. And you know, as a parent that after the past year that we've been through, there is guilt in what your children have possibly missed out on. So what we have data on is that a lot of parents are, are just shopping right now to help lift the spirits of their kids. I get it, right? I'm a mom and I, I think of some of the things that my little guy has missed out on. Like he didn't get to go to swimming lessons or soccer or anything like that. But what we don't yet know, and we'll find out in the next couple of years, it's like what areas are children um, going to be impacted in when it comes to things like mental health? So we see this trend of, um, of parents getting out there and spending a lot of money. And really this is about kind of exercising a little bit of caution when we're spending, but still being able to get out and give your kids a, a little bit of something. Well, you in, in this article really hit home for me and it's timely because uh, j just a couple of days ago, over the weekend, uh, I, leading into the weekend, it was the end of last week, I, I blew one of my kids off and wanting to play because I, I had to get something done. I was like, dude, I just, I just got to get this done. And he was totally cool about it, but I still felt the, the parent guilt. And uh, that weekend we were online shopping for necessities. And I did find a thing or two that I thought the kids would love. And I ended up getting them because I blew my kid off. <laughs> Totally. Like last night I did the same thing. I, I was online and I was like, I just, I have to get my kid a new Paw Patrol sticker and coloring book because have to. this poor have kid, to. he has colored his way through my walls, by the way, as well as all the coloring books. Cause we've been having to keep him for the most part indoors, but Here's what's really cool is when we look at uh, what you could spend your money on, there are some very positive areas. So wellness for children crosses over four different dimensions. It's not just like physical. That is one of the dimensions. There's also psychological, social, and environmental. And so is your parent thinking of like, what could I spend my money on to help lift my kid's spirits? Any spending in those four areas tends to improve the overall wellness of your child. So I'll give you a couple of examples. So let's say you have a kid who uh, is totally obsessed, uh, I am, by the way, with the skipping rope craze on TikTok. I see these people skip rope and I'm like, as soon as I'm not pregnant again, I'm like going to get myself <laughs> a skipping rope and do what they're doing on TikTok because it's so awesome. Um, but that would be like a great purchase. You think of uh, a way to improve your child's physical health, get them a skipping rope if they're into it, get them a new pair of sneakers. And then when it comes to like psychological help, they might really benefit from like a meditation app such as Headspace or Calm or a motivational coach or a book about focus. It could be spending in that area. Still, you could spend in the category of social, which is like if your kid does not yet have a device, if it is age appropriate for them, they might benefit from having their own device and connecting with their friends. And then in, when it comes to the environment, let's face it, if your kid is like driving you and the household nuts because they're working loudly at the dining room table, it might be time to set them up with their own desk, their own chair, surround them with some great books and kind of spend your money on things that would help and help lift them up as well as benefit you too <laughs> well then maybe i'll set up a nice desk and chair and and all the stuff that they would need and i'll set it up in the shed in my backyard <laughs> right <laughs> i loved i love this trend i was seeing on um uh, parents, uh, they were spending money on gardening for kids. I thought that was so cool. Great idea. Great you know, idea. Give, give them not just a sandbox. Why not give them a garden and yeah. build them something that they can, you know, they can plant carrots or whatever <laughs> they yeah. want to plant. But I thought, what a, like, what a fabulous way to spend some money and lift your kid's spirits. 
and what a wonderful way of twisting my uh, terrible joke uh, into something <laughs> constructive. Leave that to Leslie and Scorgy. You know, if if uh, your kids, you highlight this in the piece, which I love. We've talked about this before. Like if they are ready to to learn about money, uh, maybe give them an allowance. And I love your idea of of what to give them. You you really helped me out big time. Uh, with that, because uh, I've gone back and forth on that. Talk about that in a minute. And also uh, about, uh, you know, a youth bank account. I remember getting a bank account when I was very, very young. And boy, that, that helped me big time. Well, first off, kids that are over about the age of eight definitely need a bank account. So if they can even have one earlier, like my son has one already and <laughs> he's not even yeah. two. <laughs> um, but that's because mommy, mommy wants to have all that ready because I'm a planner. But the, the beautiful thing about allowances right now in the pandemic, you can actually teach your kids some really valuable money lessons by giving them an allowance. This can be a physical allowance or it can be a digital allowance. You decide if they have that bank account, you could do it as an e-transfer and you could help show them how to manage their money. What I love is that the simplest way to set an allowance is $1 for every year of their age. So if your kid is eight, they get $8. If your kid is 18, they get $18. And, you know, I think it's really up to your discretion, but if you were not sure where to start to following that $1 per year of age rule, so simple, they'll love it. They'll start to learn how to budget. What a great life skill. <laughs> it can yeah. help so many, so many, you know, youth out just learning that. My kid's seven and he's going to be, is he going to be eight this year? Yeah. I think he's going to be eight uh, this year. So, um, actually nine months today he's going to be eight. So, uh, that gives me an idea. Like I'm definitely, I think that's going to be his birthday present is I'm taking him to the bank. I'm going to open up a bank account. It's going to be the whole experience of that. And I'll, you know, I'll start. Cause that's what happened to me when I was a kid. I don't remember how old I was. I think I was a bit older than eight, maybe like 11, 12 years old. That was a gift that my family gave me. They, they, they put a hundred bucks in the bank account. It was mine. I had, and they said, do whatever you want with it. And I remember my mom, uh, my aunt worked at the bank that I would go to and uh, I would go in line and I would fill out the, the, the paper. You remember the deposit I had to fill out the slip. Yes. So I, I would <laughs> fill out the deposit or withdrawal. And, you know, let's say it was a withdrawal, so withdrawal, $5. And I would be in line and I would wait for my aunt and then I would go up and I would give her the slip and she would go and get the $5 for me and I'd have to sign something, whatever I had to do. And uh, it was, it was a great experience. And I think, I think that's what I'm going to do for his eighth birthday this year is I'm going to take him to the bank, open up an account. I think that's one of the best gifts that you could possibly give. And I heard that some banks are still giving kids the physical bank book. Uh, you would remember that. And yeah. uh, it was so like, it was so cool to see that. By the way, I got to tell you, on my physical bank book, when I was 14 years old, there was an accidental deposit into my account of $346,000. It was someone's house settlement, I think. And then the reverse happened. So they took it out of the account. But on my bank book, for, for like that moment in time, when they printed it out, there was the, the accidental deposit and then the intentional withdrawal when they were correcting the transaction. But I still distinctly remember being so young, seeing that. And honestly, I think it contributed to my motivation to have a lot of money. <laughs> but imagine that though, like that, that banking error might have created you as as uh, <laughs> as this personal finance expert. Like th this may have dictated your entire professional future. Oh, I think it had a role to play. When I saw those numbers, I was so motivated. But that's the whole point. So when you get your kids involved in banking, this yeah. is like the number one thing you can do is just show them the process. Yeah expose them, teach them along the way. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to, you know, spend too much and you, you know, the drill, but it's okay. Yeah. It's part of the learning process. 
uh, and, and uh, good advice as well in the piece is to take care of your money because spending your time stressing about your finances is going to mess up this quality time with your kids. It totally. Like time rules. It's the most valuable thing. So when we look at the biggest gifts that you can give your kids, um, your time is number one. Also your health, your mental and physical health as a parent is so important. And I get it that we're really all concerned about our kids' mental health and physical health right now, but make sure that you're taking care of your own because it's Possibly the biggest, most beautiful gift that you can give them is your whole self. Um, and then you can spoil them a little bit. Exactly. If you budget properly, check out MeVest.ca. Personal finance expert, MeVest founder, Baby Hank's mom. I'm going to have to update that soon. I Leslie know. Ann <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Leslie Ann. We'll talk again next week. Thanks, Jeff. All right.